from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of Ansible Fest 2020, brought to you by Red Hat. Welcome back to theCUBE coverage of Ansible Fest 2020 virtual. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick, my co-host this week. Day two keynote coverage, Jeff. Uh, good to hear all the great commentary. Um, good stuff, great to see you. Yeah, you too, John. You know, it was a great way to start the day too with Chris Wright. Uh, you've interviewed him a ton. I've interviewed him a ton. I don't know how many times he's been on theCUBE, but he's, he's such a sharp guy and he's very articulate and he speaks in really simple uh, analogies and it's really uh, easy to keep track of what he's talking about and, and really focusing on the edge, you know, and he even broke down what exactly is the edge. And he said it very simply, right? You're just moving compute to the location where the data is gathered as well as where it's consumed. Then he had a great example of of you know, uh, an edge device on a, on a railroad track, keep a track of the trains, and how do you manage that? How do you keep track of it? If there's a problem with it, how do you, how do you fix it so that you can use these, these devices out on the edge to you know, provide the data and the uh, telemetry to avoid things like everyone's trying to avoid, like unplanned maintenance and unplanned downtime or potentially having some little issue that, that forces you to reroute a bunch of the trains and you can't get out there to fix it for so much time. So really bringing this intelligence to the edge um, and being able to bring that compute there, still supported by a data center for a lot of stuff, but really again, just fundamentally moving compute to the edge. Loved his story. Yeah, you know, Chris is a great, uh, great guy, CTO of Red Hat. We've interviewed many times on theCUBE, CUBE alumni, tech athlete, as we say. Um, but if you think about, I mean, we go back to OpenStack uh, when we first started interviewing Chris. And what's interesting, Jeff, about this keynote is 5G and Edge was a big part of it. And if you look at the uh, rise of the telco cloud, and that was Pat Gelsinger at VMworld just recently talked about this telco cloud. And if you look at kind of what's going on, OpenStack was supposedly dead by <laughs> Amazon. OpenStack really has brought in the whole private cloud or the telco cloud. If you look at where OpenStack has been successful over the years, you get this new rise of the telco cloud. Okay, if you bring that in, again, bring back Pat Gelsinger's comment around how telco and 5G is a B2B app, not a B2C. Businesses will be leveraging 5G and that is clearly an IOT use case. The internet of things at the edge is going to be people, devices, everything purpose built to programmable. Um, and so this is a huge um, positioning uh, shift in the marketplace as companies have to level up and figure out the edge. So, you know, Chris nails it in my opinion. If you want to innovate, you got to automate at the edge. This again is a nice tailwind for Red Hat and Ansible because it brings the Ansible automation in with OpenShift and all the work that they've been doing over the years. So it kind of is a, a coming home, if you will, for all the work from OpenStack to OpenShift to public hybrid and now multi-cloud and with private cloud, AKA the telco cloud. So this is a fundamental change. I think 5G is going to be a real go big or go home moment. I think I'm praying that it's going to be going to be faster, cheaper, smaller for us as consumers, but companies got to get on this. And the pandemic has shown that connectivity, security is required. And this is only going to put more pressure on the networks. It's just going to be incredible. I think he hit a home run with the keynote. I'm super glad Red Hat's thinking this way because it really shows what I think the future will be. Yeah. Another thing that Chris talked on, I actually took some notes here. Um, I, I just want to quote from my notes is he talked about automation, right? A lot of this automation is the theme. We hear about automation all the time, but he had an interesting quote that it's more than a tool, but a process, a constant process on and on that you need to embed automation as a fundamental component of the organization. And I thought that was really interesting, right? We hear this over and over about so many themes, right? It's not, it's not a destination, it's a journey. And to really think about automation uh, in more the context of a journey where you can in, put it in as many processes as you can. Now we had a great interview with you know, Google way back when talking about trying to get all the, the lameness out of everyday jobs, right? To, to, to automate the, the minutia, I think was the quote, uh, so that people can get onto higher value things. So I thought this is a really interesting take to, to take kind of a higher level view of automation and think about applying it in as many places as you possibly can. And it is a journey versus you know, a one-stop shop, you put it in and move on to your next task. 
Yeah, that's a great point about the organizational impact because if you think about, and again, he kind of addressed this in the keynote and it's kind of sprinkled throughout the theme, but also we've been reporting on it through the CUBE interviews, is that it's, the, it's connecting through that last mile automation at scale, that's a core message we've heard. That's the, the capabilities of the tech, but the skills um, gap and the skills to actually address these challenges of the IOT edge with 5G are being developed. Cybersecurity, um, space, DevOps, SecOps, these are skill areas with not enough people to do the job and there's more automation coming. So you need, again, skills gaps, so organizations have to address that. And finally, trust and security are huge. So you got the, you know, the capabilities, the skill set and trust and security because if you got to have these devices, whether they're purpose built or software defined, um, this truly impacts an organization, not just by having the speeds and feeds, the trust and security and then the skills, who's going to build it, who's going to implement it, who's going to manage it. This is all a whole new generation. And this is what's clearly coming out of all the data we're seeing in the market. It's not just the edge, it's, it's everything to do with this kind of like last mile IOT piece. And it's large scale, so it's not going away. Right, and Matt Jones touched about on that a little bit in his, in his keynote as well, talking about using automation to build community. And to your point, John, it comes up over and over in all those keynotes is trust, 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 right? You have to trust the people that you're working with, so that you can build community and you know that they're going to do their part of the job and you can do your part of the job. And, and the way you build trust is with collaboration so that you can cross those barriers, whether it's interdepartmental, or I think the one of the lines from the keynotes was, you know, between dev and networking. He talks about them being locked up, you know, behind special magnetic locks and hard to get to. So if you, if you can't get to them, you can't collaborate with them, hard to build trust. So really, I think it's, again, an interesting twist to use automation as a vehicle to build trust. Really important um, concept, again, as you said, in, in 2020, as we come to the end of 2020 and into 2021, uh, you know, COVID has changed the dynamic of yeah. DevOps and the way DevOps teams work and how they work and what they measure and how they collaborate. So uh, if you don't have trust, that puts you in a real bad spot. Well, trust is multiple dimensions, right? You mentioned um, um, the people side, but also infrastructure as code. One of the ethoses of DevOps is you got to trust the infrastructure. If you're coding and programming the infrastructure, you got to understand that that infrastructure as code is going to work. And you know, container workloads are, are still only about 15% penetrated, give or take, IDC says. So more containerization is going to happen. More infrastructure as code is going to happen. You need trust there. And, what we're hearing at the show here is, and kind of teased out in the keynote is customers are thinking about the, their infrastructure automation strategy, but open source still matters. And that's where the trust comes in. The automation space in light of other major cloud vendors promoting their own platforms, cross cloud integration and automation are starting to become key things that people are starting to talk about. Not just AWS public cloud, you got Azure, Google and other clouds, as customers start thinking about the trust relationship and open source, this is be kind of becoming a big point. So, you know, op being open is the way to go. That's where open source is. So I think the trust equation will be very interesting to see how that plays out, not only on the infrastructure as code from a resiliency standpoint and scale, but open source when you add the people component and this collections and content, it's going to be very interesting to see how that all plays out. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's going to be a good show. And the other thing is that it still feel it still really feels like Ansible, right? It still really feels like Red Hat. It doesn't feel like the you know kind of the IBM uh, acquisition has had a material impact in the way that they go to market, in the way that the community engages, and and just kind of the voice to me still sounds pretty consistent. So you know, good for IBM for you know taking a great asset and letting it continue to uh, continue to run. Well, the thing that I'm looking for going forward coming out of this event is the big mega trend on the business model side is everything as a service also called XAAS. Uh, we're hearing that from Cisco, VMware, everyone's talking about everything as a service. And it's easy to give a mandate. Oh, everything as a service. Jeff, go build it out. Everything's as a service. You go, okay. And you go, okay, how do we make that happen? It's not trivial. So you have clustering, you have uh, multi-clusters, policy, governance, all the things under the covers of making everything as a service, you need automation. And I think the conversation will shift from automation, automation, automation to services, 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 because to get to anything as a service, you got to have the under, underpinnings, you got to have the data, you got to have the automation. These are critical architectural foundational things. And you can start to hear that from some of the influences in the industry. Automation is great. 
but to get to the services, as a, everything as a service, it's got to work. It's easy to say, it's hard to do. And we'll keep an All eye right. on that. All right, great. Well, John, again, thanks for sharing your thoughts. Uh, we will jump into the program and hear from from the great folks at, at Ansible and some of their fantastic guests uh, for this continuing coverage of the queue at Ansible Fest 2020. Ready, John? All right, let's do it. A lot of great interviews. Right. Stay with us. All right, thanks for watching.